Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so today, like I said yesterday, I thought we would uh, make some potato candy. Now, I know most people have never heard of potato candy, which kind of boggles my mind because we grew up eating it. And it, this recipe is as old as time. And depending on, I guess, whose recipe you follow, because I'm going to follow somebody else's recipe today, um, it's just three ingredients. So I, my dad... Um, he used to make this at Christmas time when I was a kid and it's something that it's been in our family for a minute now. Um, and I, I, I made it once like a bazillion years ago and I couldn't get it to work right. So we're going to try it again. Um, for only having three ingredients at its base core, this recipe, if you don't follow the rules, um, cannot turn out and sometimes it just doesn't turn out so I'm warning you now this I it's not a very expensive recipe to make so you could try making it a couple two three times but uh I just never got back around to it till today I like I said I haven't had it since I was a kid I mean it's been at least 35 40 years since I've had um homemade potato candy so anyhow um but like I said you have to kind of follow the rules and pay attention and it'll, uh, or it cannot work. Uh, the recipe I'm doing today, I got off of sugar, spun, spun sugar or something. Uh, as always, I'll put it right here, right about now. And, uh, she adds butter and vanilla to hers. And I don't remember dad ever putting vanilla in it. So, I mean, we'll see. Um, but all in all, though, it sounds fun, and butter could work because it acts as a binder also once it gets cold again and, you know, things like that. But, uh, yeah, um, that's it. I, we're going to make it. It's easy. It's quick. You know, it's something that you can do with your kids if you have kids um, or if you're just new to baking and working with sweets in general. That's a good place to start, um, especially if you do it right because it's not hard. You just have to follow the rules. Um, so, anyhow. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, thank you. Uh, all my new subscribers, thank you. And, you know, I'm glad you're, you're here. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. As always, subscribe right down there at the bottom. Uh, feel free to comment. I respond to all my comments so far. Um, you know, in some way, shape, or form. If it needs another comment, I comment back. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, you know, like, uh, heart, uh, all of the above. Um... But anyhow, so I had to go through that spiel real quick. I'm trying to find a way to shorten it up. But if this is your first video, I'm really glad you stopped by. And I hope you stick around to be part of the neighborhood. Um, you know, we're a pretty good neighborhood. But anyhow, that being said, let's get down, go ahead and get down to the counter. And uh, we'll start making this quick, fast, really easy. Well, I won't say quick, fast, but really easy uh, potato candy. All right. Hold on for me one second. Okay, we're down here at the counter, and we have pretty much everything we need at the moment to uh, do this uh, dessert with, this candy with. So, the first thing you need is one russet potato, all right? Make sure it's a russet. Why? I don't know. I just know that it's highly recommend you use a russet, and they're the cheapest potatoes ever. And you want to get, not a huge one, but a good one that will give you a half a cup of mashed potatoes, because that's basically what we're going to make first. So, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take my peeler. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the skin peeled off this potato. Okay, we've got our potato peeled. Um, nice and clean. And make sure you take a look. Make sure there's no bad spots on it or anything like that that yeah, you may need to cut out or whatever. And then the next thing we'll do is we're just going to dice this into about one inch pieces, one and a half inch pieces. We just want small pieces. We'll chop it up, not dice it. Um, but we want to chop these up into smaller pieces so they uh, cook quicker. When you're making mashed potatoes, I mean, this is kind of just basic mashed potato here because we're not putting anything in it, nothing in the in the potatoes, so to speak. But uh, you, you cut them up, and then that way they can uh, cook quickly. You know, get your bad spots out while you're cutting them. You'd put this thing in the water whole. It would take, you know, over an hour to cook. Where by cutting these into these little one to three quarter inch pieces, we put them in the water and um, they're done in 15 minutes after the water starts boiling. So now we're just going to take our potatoes, plop them in the water. Okay, 
And then we're going to turn our stove on and get this bad boy a boiling. Um, once I put our, I'll put my lid on it, just offset it. Once the water starts boiling, okay, because right now it's not doing anything. It's just a little bit of hair above room temperature. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to boil these potatoes for 15 minutes ish. I'll start checking them at about 12 to 13 because I'm looking for something that's fork tender and I can match. All right. If you don't cook too long, they'll just fall completely apart. So that's really important that that happens. So let us, you know, let it go about 10, 12 minutes and then start checking them. I know most potatoes roughly, if you chop them about an inch cubed, they will, uh, be done and ready in 15 minutes. So when I come back, we'll take a look and see what we need to check for it. And then, uh, start and move uh, and then talk about what to do next all right be right back hey okay, guys so i'll let these boil for about 15 20 minutes ish and i want to show you what i was talking about with fork tender okay there we maybe bring it over here a little you're plugged in you're charging all right so what i'm looking for if you can see it is when i put my fork in to a potato it should easily slide in. I should be able to pick it up. All right. If it don't jab it, just lightly push it in. And that way you'll know it's done. If it breaks in half, you know, you're really uh, done. So that's what I'm looking for right there. Now, all I'm going to do is, and this is the hard part, I guess. I got to shut my heat off because they're ready to mash, but I can't just leave them sitting there like that or they will literally just fall apart. Now, I am using a strainer instead of a colander, you know, like you'd use for spaghetti noodles, because, and this is the important part, these potatoes need to be as dry as possible. So by using the strainer instead of a colander like you'd use for noodles, um, you will have a, you won't have any of that water sitting in the bottom. And then while that's draining, I can go ahead and get a paper towel, or you can just use a regular towel or whatever. And uh, I'm going to wipe the inside of this pan out because we're going to make our mashed potatoes in this pan. So, I've got some shenanigans, and I want you want your pan to be dry. Dry is the key to these. I Moisture is the number one cause of liquidy won't set uh potatoes when you're adding the powdered sugar to it that's the biggest problem everybody has so then we're going to put our potatoes back in there then i will grab the masher like such and then we're just going to mash these up and until they're smooth you know you don't want any lumps or bumps it's kind of like making mashed potatoes for the holidays okay we got these cooled down or cooled down uh mash down until they're nice you know no no lumps no bumps they're nice and creamy nice and creamy but you notice they're really dry right because unlike mashed potatoes we did not add milk or salt or pepper or any of that oh wanted to get a rubber spatula sorry um and, and that's okay. We didn't want to add anything to this. We, we just want just mashed potatoes and that's it. So here's where the part comes where it takes takes a minute and it's kind of like making cheesecake. Um, we just need to wait. We want to get this down to room temperature. Uh, I'm just going to leave it here in the pot. I suppose you could take it out and put it on something to thin it out a little more. What you don't want to do is put it in the fridge. Um, it builds up a moisture content in the potato and can cause your potatoes to not become a dough. It still, it'll just stay a liquid and it'll be a mess. Um, literally not figuratively speaking. Um, it's quick and easy to just throw it away and start over, but we're trying to avoid that. So we're just going to let this sit and cool until room temperature. And when we come back, we will uh, move on to making them. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we uh, let our um, potatoes come down to room temperature. And they're nice and smooth and beat up. Like such. So, next thing we need to do 
I need to add one stick, 115 grams, um, eight tablespoons of softened butter, so almost room temperature, if not room temperature. And we are gonna need a total of potentially six to seven cups of powdered sugar, which is like 819 to 910 grams. This bag is 910 grams. <laughs> and it is a, a one pound bag, two pound bag. So two pounds of powdered sugar, but we're gonna start with a cup. We're gonna put that in there with it. And this is kind of where it becomes a guessing game. You may only use six, you may use all seven. You can go a little more because it just depend on the potatoes, the butter, you know, how much moisture is in the potatoes. Yeah, because that moisture is going to eat that powdered sugar up. And then we're just going to take our hand mixer. I'm using it today instead of digging out the stand mixer. I'm going to put it on low so I don't put the powdered sugar everywhere. And I'm going to start creaming this. And as I cream it, I'm going to continue to add powdered sugar. Okay, so we got our powdered sugar in there. And I'm going to show you what I believe to be what she's talking about. Because she said it should be ma malleable. Um... Uh, and to me, this is malleable. It's it's moldable. It's you know you can do something with it, but it is still kind of sticky, and that's okay because she's this recipe does something else different that I've never seen anybody else do. I mean, that I've seen make this, which has only been a couple people. Uh, my dad being one of them about 40 years ago. So she uh, in the recipe they they call for because I really don't remember if it's a she or a guy. Um, they call for a, to put this in the fridge for an hour. And I'm going to guess is to get the butter to solidify a little, which will give you a firmer crust or a firmer roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this in the fridge. Now that we've got a nice, you know, consistency of dough there. And when I come back, we will uh, roll this out and uh, get her buttoned up. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, we let our uh, potato base sit in the fridge for about an hour, maybe a little longer. Um, and if it's too stiff, per se, as we're getting ready to roll it out, we just leave it set out for a minute and that butter will start to soften up a little bit. I, the more I thought about it, this recipe in particular, I think um, she puts the butter in there, they put the butter in it, um, to help make it stiff. So we're going to take half of our this actually makes two whole rolls so we're going to take half of our roll roughly half and we're going to put it um we i got powdered sugar down here just like i would flour if i were kneading a uh a dough if we were if we were doing out a uh, pie dough and we're just going to coat this generally and generously in powdered sugar if you have that this unlike dough normal like pie dough you, you can't add too much powdered sugar to this, is my understanding at any rate. Like I said, I've never made potato candy before, although I have had it several times as a youngin. And so I had to, I'm learning right along with you, right? So we're going to make this a rectangle, and we're going to make it about a, about a quarter inch thick. So all I'm going to do, now that I got that on there and it's nice and coated with powdered sugar, is I'm going to grab my rolling pin, and we're going to roll it out to be a rectangle. We got our uh, rectangle made out of our potato and powdered sugar. Now we're just going to put in uh, just a nice covering of peanut butter. Uh, it, the amount is really up to you, and I did not grab my offset special. Hold on for one second. Okay, she's a peep. So we'll. You just want to, I mean, but you don't want to like a, I mean, you may want a honking layer on there, but I'm just going to put a thin layer and I'm going to leave it about, a, about an eighth to a quarter inch from the edge. That way, you know, it doesn't go flying out the sides. And I mean, we can always cut the ends off, so to speak, and eat those. And nobody would be worse the wiser. But we want a nice, decently thin layer, you know, just enough to balance the, uh, sorry guys. If you hear the hissing in the background, it's because I am doing, uh, I'm canning up some hamburger also. And that was it telling me it's time to put the uh, weight on. If you'd be interested in seeing how to can it, um, I would like to redo the video 
that I did once before on it. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, I, I did a I did it justice, but man, I'll tell you the canned hamburger. It, you can can so much in one day, and then you come home, you don't have to worry about browning up hamburger for something. It's awesome. All right, let me finish getting this on there, and then we'll move on to the next step. We got the peanut butter on there, so now we just gotta gently, yeah, you because know, remember you're working with really dried out peanut butter or potatoes and powdered sugar, so we're gonna gently start this roll and we're going to do it long ways um that seems to be the the way it goes and you want some fairly tight rolls but this actually makes a lot so i'm not hating on it not one iota uh, i actually have another potato in the wings waiting so we're doing dual duty that way i have some for the house and i have some from work okay so we got her nice and rolled up next thing we're gonna do and we're gonna cut off the ends but uh -huh. we're gonna cut these into about quarter to half inch pieces just like such Okay, we got them all cut into a half inch. Uh, well, they're supposed to be rounds, but they ended up turning into like egg shapes. That's all right. Now what we gotta do is take them off. That one didn't turn out so hot. I think the my dough's a little too warm. Should have put it back in the freezer or in the fridge. That's all right. That's all right. This is how we learn, right? So I got them all cut up and put on the plate and they didn't turn out quite circular, but that's all right. I don't remember my dad's ever being perfectly circular either, but it's also a learning process. I think I got my uh, potato candy a little too warm. So it uh, wasn't playing nice that base out on the fact that my peanut butter is kind of oily and uh, not thinking I do have the pressure canner going. So, but what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to put these in the fridge, cover them, put them in the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes, let them firm back up and where we've been playing with them. And when I come back, we'll try one. I, they're good about it. Taste good. It's because they don't look good. I mean, they don't taste good. I'll be right back. All right. Hold on for me one second. All right, guys. So we let these uh, sit in the fridge for a minute and at least John here, I'll show them to you. Um, I did up the other log. Remember, we only took half of it. So that left me another half to do another roll. And I went ahead and did it. Uh, I want to show you what you can learn um, just in a, a short period of time. And I and I know now that basically my kitchen was just too warm to do these in. Um, and that's my fault. I was busy canning and wasn't thinking really. But there is our original set. They didn't turn out horrible. They're still very edible. Um, they just, their presentation is lacking where these ones here, are tenfold better right they look good you know and i mean I, yeah, i'm sure they smell good but right now they don't smell at all um but they look much better they look more presentable i would put these out at a party and leave those back to the offside for the wife and kids so to speak um but that being said um let's try one all right so there we are is a oh i'll turn it around um that's what we look like right there i think they they look beautiful so uh let's talk about what they taste like let's try it first um would you like first bite i mean i have at it um i think it's gonna be very good huh oh yeah that's a pretty baby doll mm. it tastes like my childhood you don't taste the potato at all. Don't let the name fool you. You taste the powdered sugar, um, which oddly enough, it, <clears throat> the peanut butter actually tones the powdered sugar down a little bit and gives it a nice balance so you taste both. Mm. Now, that being said, I don't know anybody that can sit down and eat a whole plate of these at once. I ended up, and I don't think I said it when I came back, 
but because I had more than a half a cup of potatoes, it took me 10 cups of sugar um, to put this in, which oddly enough, um, <laughs> I saw a video, I can't remember his name, but he's on uh, Instagram, not Instagram, uh, yeah, Instagram, maybe, no, TikTok. And he does some of the most amazing old school recipes. And this was one he did. Um, I just happened to catch it on my Facebook page, on my Facebook feed. And uh, his took 10 to 12 cups of powdered sugar per russet potato and then the peanut butter. Um, there was no uh, butter in it at all. Which, like I said, this is the first time I'd ever seen it with butter. And that sounded really interesting. Um, hands down, I, I think that that... Um, it helps it hold together. It's like a, almost like a fail safe because you put them in the fridge, you put your, you know, dough in the fridge and it chills it, you know, it chills that butter, makes it hard again. It makes it easy to work with. It's like making it a dough crust. Um, I would just, temperature is not your friend in your kitchen, you know, unless it's cool in your kitchen. You know, if you're 70 ish or colder, you know, 68, you would be fine. Um, my kitchen, on the other hand, stays about a constant 76 degrees because the oven's here and the kitchen is so small. Um, but like I said, the second batch turned out really pretty. They both taste the same. I know I, I had a piece of the ugly, the ugly pinwheels, uh, well, potato candy pieces off camera. Um, but the new ones, they're the second batch, perfect. I mean, they both taste great, but anyhow. Uh, give these a try. I am definitely going to make more of these now that I have an inkling of clues to what I'm doing. And uh, probably put them in with my Christmas cookies as gifts. And that'll be awesome. Uh, but it, 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 try this. Quick, easy. Do it with your kids. Or if you don't have kids, it's okay. It's still fairly quick and easy. Um, and they're delightful. Let me know if you do. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Hop on Facebook group and, uh, or let, and let us know. Or... If you've got a really cool old school candy recipe or cookie recipe that you'd like to share, put it on the Facebook group. Um, leave a comment down below and I'll look it up or whatever. Um, I think that's fun. And sharing is always fun. And food is easy to share, right? So next week, I, I don't know what we're going to do for dinner yet. Um, I haven't quite got that far, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Uh, dessert wise on Thursday for baking, <clears throat> I think we're going to make some stained glass cookies. Um, and they're not an incredibly hard cookie to make by any means, but there is some moving parts. Um, we've only made them one other time, and it was back when I first started baking, and I found it to be a bit challenging. But now that I, I kind of know what I know, because I've been baking for a minute, baking for a minute, um, I don't think they're going to be quite as hard this go around as they were the last go around, but they are fun to make, and they look so cool when we're done. So, that being said, um, until next week, I love you. I love you very much. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I, I take nothing, I, I don't take you guys for granted at all, and I would never tell you I didn't, I, that I love you if I didn't mean it. Tell somebody else you love them, and that you love them very much. It's going to make their day a whole lot better. Take them some of these potato candies, and they're going to know you care by the amount of love you put into those. Yeah, so, next week for dinner on Wednesday. I love you. See you then.